What's up everyone, it's Endymion, and today it's time to look at the final review scores for Black Myth Wukong, how well it's doing, what's coming up for the game, and all the latest nonsense surrounding it. From reviewers trashing the game for not having enough female representation, to other reviewers claiming now is the time to trust the game journalists again out of nowhere, there's quite a bit to talk about. First, let's look at Wukong's final Metacritic score as of right now. It's currently sitting at an 82 on Metacritic, which is about the same score that Stellar Blade got a few months back. From most of the reviews I've been reading, it seems to be the similar praises and complaints across the board. The game is being praised for its combat, which is also being called on the easier side when it comes to Souls likes, which I personally don't mind myself. I don't really think that every game needs to be endgame Elden Ring levels of hard in order to justify itself existing. Lots of reviews are also praising the level up system, calling it very flexible, which I'm very keen to see myself, as well as the visuals and music are also praised and the fluidity of how the combat works. However, on the negative side, it seems to be unanimously agreed that the level design is very basic. The game is apparently more linear than expected, but it does open up the game's level design at certain points depending on the chapter that you're in. It seems like the game has a Souls-like structure in terms of bonfires or shrines in this case and then getting to each one to face the next boss. But the actual level design itself is more so like Devil May Cry in a sense, which is very linear as well. Pretty much most levels in Wukong, according to the reviews, are about putting you on a path where there's enemies that show up, which are great in variety, and I love that because Souls likes need variety in terms of enemies to keep it interesting. And then you just kind of go from encounter to encounter with the occasional side path here or there to find some items or secrets. The big negative here that seems to be also echoed is that the game doesn't do enough with the many forms of the Monkey King. If you don't know, Black Myth Wukong is based on the journey to the West, which is a famous Chinese story. And the Monkey King is able to transform into many, many different creatures, which you can do in the game too. However, none of these transformations, according to reviews, have any interaction when you must use them in order to explore the environment around you. Which is unfortunate, however, I will say in Wukong's defense, this is the first game in this potential series, and based on how much it's already selling, I would not really be surprised if a more robust sequel is planned in the near future that uses those criticisms as fuel in order to better itself. Because I agree, I think having a character that can change forms into pretty much anything could really open up level design and exploration in very cool ways. Like imagine that you find a lake early on, but it's too deep and there's treasure at the bottom of it, but later on in the game, you face some sort of mythical serpent and then you gain its form. And now you can go back to that lake, turn into that serpent, and then swim to the bottom and then grab those items that you couldn't earlier. You could easily see how this design idea could open up the levels and exploration to insane degrees. Turning into a butterfly and then squeaking through a crack in the mountain to a treasure trove, or you could become a large beast and then use that strength to shatter a gate that opens up another level entirely. Yeah, those kinds of ideas could really be endless and very interesting, but sadly, no, that is not here in this game. But based on how hyped and how much Wukong is already selling, these would be obvious fixes in the future, and currently the game is number one on Steam as well. And it has over 600,000 wish lists, which is more than other games on the top 10 combined. So to say that Wukong will be a big seller, that's an understatement at this point. But overall, based on many reviews, it seems that the game is well done. And the other unfortunate issue is the game does seem to have bugs. Which yes, this will be squashed as time goes on, but nevertheless, it is a problem that unfortunately will dampen the enjoyment of day one buyers. Whether you buy Wukong day one or later, that's up to you. I'll be playing it right away myself so that I can mostly stop using pre-recorded footage from the developers for videos and instead use my own, which will undoubtedly be of higher quality too, and then I can also give my opinion as well. However, of course, like I reported before, Wukong has been the victim of many claims from game journalist websites. To catch you up to speed quickly, Rebecca Valentine of IGN was the original journalist that pushed the story that Wukong was made by sexist developers. 
And since that reporting at IGN, pretty much every single article from then till now about Wukong references and brings up those accusations. Surprisingly enough though, IGN's review for Wukong has no mention of the sexism or claims by Rebecca Valentine at all. It was actually even reviewed by another journalist at IGN, which is smart in my opinion to do. Because whether what you think of the devs is right or wrong, their opinions outside of the game doesn't really affect the actual product's quality. Unfortunately, there was one reviewer and website that did double down on this, and unfortunately these baseless claims led to a lower score for Wukong because of it. This brings me to ScreenRant.com. Don't harass this journalist or this website by the way, let's just look at what's happening here. So Screen Rant posted their own review for the game, it's quite lengthy and goes over pretty much everything I already said in this video. It's fun, it's linear, it's sort of buggy, and it has a great level up system among other things. Screen Rant journalist Samar Abedian, I hope I said that right, says the game is overall great and that they enjoyed their time with it. They then gave the game a 3 out of 5 stars, which in terms of Metacritic, that puts their review somewhere in the 60-70% to 70 out of 100 in comparison, which kind of goes against all the praise that they gave the game in the review. Since they do say the game has engaging and addictive combat, enemy and boss encounters are great, and that the graphics are stunning. Yet there's one section during this review that proves yet again that journalists still can't enjoy things without being activists. One section near the end of this review is called Largely Lacks Inclusion and Representation and claims that Wukong's characters lack diversity according to this reviewer. I will now read you what is said here and then we can talk about it. They said, and I quote, While my analysis and review of Black Myth Wukong remains focused on gameplay, it's important to mention the controversy surrounding the game's studio and the reports of misogyny and sexism from developers. Playing as a female gamer allowed me to notice issues surrounding inclusion and representation. As far as chapters 1 and 2, while characters are clearly fictitious and fantastical creatures, there were no female or feminine NPCs, enemies, or bosses present. The only exception, if you can call it female, is a boss named Mother of Stones in chapter 2, which is nothing more than a still glowing rock with no abilities being guarded by other enemies. The lack of diversity and inclusivity resonates with the misogynistic comments reported to have been made by developers, which express disdain for women playing their games. Although Black Myth Wukong does have truly enjoyable moments, the underlying feeling that women aren't welcome in this world felt present throughout my gameplay experience. It's worth noting that the game is based on the novel Journey to the West, which does consist of a few important female characters. To not include any women or to only include a few is an adaptation meant for a modern audience is quite disconcerting. While this doesn't take away from the exhilaration and fun of boss fights themselves, women fans of Souls-like games may have a different perspective. Especially given that, according to reports, the developer also suggested that women aren't capable of enjoying or being skilled at these types of games. The irony behind this sentiment is that Black Myth Wukong is among the easiest of Souls-like games, and may have overestimated its ability to hang with them in terms of difficulty. While thematically and stylistically it undoubtedly falls under this category, it does not quite fit the bill in the technical skills required, such as is achieved by games like Elden Ring, Sekiro, Shadows Die Twice, and many more." End quote. And like I said, following this statement, they gave Wukong a 3 out of 5, which of course affected their Metacritic likely in a more negative fashion than anything else. The entire section here in Screen Rant's review feels utterly pointless and downright pathetic to me. First of all, the fact you went in playing a game about a monkey god with a magical staff beating up other animal-like creatures and your first thought is, where are all the women? It's pretty stupid even by journalist standards. Secondly, claiming the game is somehow bad because it doesn't have as many female characters in it, yet you also admit in the same section that the original story this game is based on also had very little in terms of female characters, proves that you're just looking for reasons to dock the game somehow in order to fit your agenda. What I always find very interesting is if a game or show is overtly diverse or female oriented, then everything is fine for these journalists. They never seem to ask questions like, well, 
where are all the men? Because deep down they know it's only a bad thing if what they want isn't represented the way that they want it to. No men, but lots of women? What diversity? Lots of men, but not enough women? Suddenly diversity is bad. Even though both ways it's the exact same thing, this journalist, unfortunately, is exactly what I'm talking about. They're not being objective, they're not being fair, and they are using their politics to effectively dock a game score because it doesn't pander to them. I mean, let's be serious here. Wukong is based on Journey to the West, right? And then you claim that the book has little to no female characters in it, which was written, obviously, a really long time ago. So Game Science, the devs who made this game, created an experience that is faithful, objectively, to that original work. And them not having many female characters, which is exactly like the book, means if anything, the game is actually authentic and represents the source material perfectly. So how can you be docking a game points for doing right by the source material like this? This would be like docking the Black Panther movie for making T'Challa black when you wanted him to be Mexican. But the movie is just representing what's in the comics accurately. You don't get to cherry pick when things offend you and then use your own stupid logic to ruin something else for not catering to you specifically. This entire section of the review, in my opinion, should immediately cause this review to be thrown out of Wukong's Metacritic score. Because it shows that this journalist is not being genuine with their criticisms by doing this. And proves, yet again, like always, that journalists these days absolutely do have their own agendas and whataboutisms that they champion. Even if they are not genuine or relevant to the work at hand. This is like reviewing food at a KFC and then docking the restaurant because they don't sell steak sandwiches. Like, dude, you're in a KFC. Why are you looking for something that wouldn't make sense being there in the first place? Besides the majority of the characters in Journey to the West and Wukong are clearly not even human to begin with anyway. They're mostly animals. Sure, they may have human-like bodies, but the majority of them are animals nonetheless. This Screen Rant review is hating on the game for reasons that make little sense, and then they're docking the game points because of their stupid viewpoints. And here's where Screen Rant's entire review's credibility gets thrown out the window where they say, It's worth noting the game is based on the novel Journey to the West, which does consist of a few important female characters. To not include any women or to only include a few is an adaptation meant for a modern audience is quite disconcerting. But is the game meant for a modern audience, or are you just saying that? Because nothing about this game screams for a modern audience to me. What that term means is a game filled with nonsensical identity politics and pandering, which seems to be the exact opposite of what Wukong really is about. The devs are Chinese too, so they don't care or even know what that term even means because it's pointless. If you hear anything is made for the modern audience, you should fully expect that game, movie, or whatever to be chocked full of stupid, unnecessary garbage. Every time I hear or read that line, I get like Vietnam flashbacks to that Indiana Jones developer with the rainbow shirt and the goofy haircut. Black Myth Wukong is not made for the modern audience. How many times do I need to explain that the concept of a modern audience doesn't even exist to begin with? There is no mythical other audience out there. There's no multiverse where there's an entire planet of rainbow-colored mongoloids ready to consume your product while eating all the bugs and living in their pods. Your audience is here, on planet Earth, the people who exist right now at this very moment who have the money to spend. I sure as hell am not a part of the modern audience. I am, like all of you, watching the same audience that has always existed for decades now. They really are still trying to find this mythical group of millions of people out there who agree with their moronic takes, aren't they? Too bad the people who usually fall into that modern audience stupidity are communists who have no money and think the government should just take care of their every need so that they can sit around and read and write all day and eat food. Listen, Wokong is based as hell. The devs are clearly too, which thank God for that by the way. This is a game made by a bunch of dudes who laugh at weirdos like modern games journalists, and this game is being made for the real audience that's out there. So it's no wonder that it's going to do so well, then again apparently it's time to trust game journalists again too. This comes from the gamer and perfectly ties into all of the other nonsense I've been talking about. This article came out in late June, but it echoes exactly what's being said in this video. 
The highlights are ridiculous too, that journalists face abuse for reviews and that the myth that journos hate video games, like, yeah, most game journalists become game journalists because it wasn't their first option, but likely their only one. Here's what they said, and it kind of proves that they do indeed hate gamers a lot. They said, and I quote, The myth that games journalists not only suck at video games, but also actively hate the medium is one that I've never understood. However, the issue with game reviews is much easier to parse. Gaming in 2024 is team-based. Your team Xbox or team PlayStation? Team Fortnite or Team Call of Duty, Team Stellar Blade or Team Censorship, Team Developer or Team Journalist, that's how many gamers see it at least. Team Elden Ring got mad when a couple of reviews said that Shadow of the Earth Tree was too difficult, accusations flew across the Twitter sphere. The critics behind said reviews were told in no uncertain terms to get good and suffered far worse abuse as misogynistic as it was vitriolic. Fast forward a week and players are leveling the very same accusations at the From Software DLC. Countless mods have added easy modes to games, one called Journalist Mode, despite the fact journos beat the game without needing it. Players feel bosses are unfair, they believe the systems are too obtuse, and yet they refuse to engage with some of the game's core mechanics due to believing that there are cheats way out. I wonder if any of them have apologized to the reviewers who pointed out these very issues." End quote. The article keeps going, bringing up examples like Cyberpunk's review at GameSpot and how the reviewer complained the game was too edgy and treated minorities badly, amongst others. The point being here is that in order for players to trust these game reviewers, these reviewers need to earn that trust first. But that's very hard to do when these reviewers like at Screen Rant start docking the scores on games that took years to make because they don't like that Wu Kong has very few female characters even though it's based on ancient text that was the same. The problem is that game journalists have largely become activists themselves and oftentimes forget that their job is to report on video games and do reviews, not cosplay as Greta Thunberg at some oil protest. We as players don't care if journalists find something offensive in a game, we'll laugh at you because what you're doing is stupid to begin with. You can't really call the backlash hurtful or abuse when you're constantly labeling the paying customers out there as misogynistic or racist. The Elden Ring thing is probably the only gotcha this article has in its favor. It's true that people attacked reviewers and then found out that the game was indeed difficult to beat due to the new scaling system and the over-designed endgame boss encounters. I'll give the gamer that people did jump the gun on Elden Ring's DLC's difficulty, and I agree that I think Shadow of the Earth Tree is over tuned and made more difficult on purpose and that it's to the detriment of the experience. I won't show the final boss of that DLC, but if you beat the DLC for Elden Ring, you know exactly what I mean when I say that some of the bosses in there are far too overtuned or designed where they feel just hard for hardness sake. But circling back to this journalist argument, players are right to not trust you guys. How can we trust IGN with their accusations against Wukong when it's been proven that they translated what game science devs said? and then presented it in the most egregious way possible, so a while back, also, Asmongold reacted to that IGN article about Wukong as well. And Asmongold's editor chimed in and proved via their own findings that IGN went out of their way to ensure that the information translated was presented as inflammatory as possible in order to enforce their position. Don't believe me? Let's watch a clip from Asmongold's channel on this right now. Context. IGN published an article trying to smear the company and the devs behind Black Myth Wukong as some sexist freaks because of some of their employees' social media posts. The article cites one of their artists who basically did the still wood meme about this monster. The problem is that this game journalist, either by sheer incompetence or malice, translated these posts in the most uncharitable way possible. And this is nothing compared to the most egregious mistranslation after one of the game company founders posted this in 2020, apologizing for the lackluster trailer of Black Myth Wukong just released. Now, how on earth do you get? I want to expand my circle and hire more people. Get licked until I can't get an erection. In reality, the actual translation completely changes the meaning of what he was saying. Not satisfied, I went back checking if anyone called this out when it happened, and they did. I can't believe that there's a person like this that has access. IGN needs to have this person writing guides on the banana game. And as you just saw, they took what was said by these developers and just made it say what they wanted it to say. It would be like if you asked me how my day was going, and then I said fine, and then you told people that I don't like women all of a sudden. 
like how you got to that conclusion out of me saying that my day was fine doesn't make any sense and you're just lying for whatever reason. These devs are also, like I said, Chinese. So their mannerisms, lingo, and metaphors will obviously be different compared to those of English-speaking people. For example, right, I'm Serbian and Armenian. We have sayings in Serbian that would make zero sense in English. For example, sometimes my mom will say Yebem te sunce, which literally translates to F the sun, which in English, you're like, why would they say that? But in Serbian, that's just something that they say, and that's what I mean. Some things don't translate well between cultures and languages. They might make sense in one, but feel totally alien and bizarre in another. So what's very likely is that a games journalist, this time Rebecca Valentine of IGN, took what Game Science said in Chinese, filtered it through her woke translator brain, and then reached the destination that she arrived at. It's not genuine, it's wrong, and it's clearly been hurting Game Science's reputation for a very long time now, over a year to be exact. So when these journalists say stuff like, well, why doesn't anybody trust us? It's because you morons eroded that trust with your stupid politics and agenda pushing for years. It's not our fault that you think everything is sexist, ableist, and racist unless it aligns with your weirdo activist brains perfectly. Yet you also deliberately go out of your way always to label things you don't agree with as right-wing extremists or misogyny for all the world to see. When in actuality, it's just people being normal. And then you wonder why nobody listens to game journalists and all we actually do is laugh at you guys. Because ultimately, you did this to yourselves and like that Black Myth Wukong review, it kind of proves that point very easily. How the hell am I supposed to take your review seriously when you're mad that there's not enough women in a game where you play a magical monkey king? As if the game would suddenly be better if a random black person just waltzed into frame or another character stood there blankly and looked at the camera and said, I'm non-binary. Did you know that I'm non-binary? So whether we ever actually trust game reviewers again comes down to a simple enough reason. Once these games journalists and such start to actually not be activists first and don't dock points on stupid stuff like diversity in the game about a magical monkey king with a staff, maybe then we can talk about it. So until you freak stop thinking everything should look and act like the inside of your gender studies classes, we're going to keep having issues. Despite these trash talks, Black Myth Wukong is going to sell like hotcakes, dude. Bet on it. It comes out very soon, as of the making of this video, it isn't out just yet. But when it does, expect more damage control from journalists, and if that happens, I'll be there to roundhouse kick their opinions into the trash like I always do. Thank you for watching, subscribe, share, and like the video. Have a wonderful day, thanks to my patrons and members, and enjoy your day, guys. Take care of yourselves, and I'll see you in the next one.